Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to record a video. Hey everyone, my name is Christine and welcome to my no makeup hair in a bun cleaning out the pantry video for you today. What I'm doing today and what I'm excited about are the following. First of all, I am getting rid of stuff that's been in my kitchen that needs to be used or go in the trash while feeding my family at the same time. So it's a win-win. While that's especially important this week, mostly because I am watching my two nephews for the entire week. They've already been here for several days. Dude, six kids eat a lot of food. So I can only imagine what some of the other families with more kids than six eat. It's astronomical. So I am going to be kind of some bulk cooking today to help prep me for the next few days of breakfasts, snacks, and things like that. What's amazing is in addition to this video and the things I will be making today, I am joining up with five other ladies and YouTube channels for more cleaning out your pantry goodness. I am meeting up with the following people for a Gather Your Fragments Friday. Amy Marion, who does the most amazing, epic, once a month, all in one day, freeze your meal cooking. Her grocery store trips are fabulous. We have Jennifer at The Daily Connoisseur jumping in today. Fallon at Moss Family TV. She posts daily vlogs every single day. My friend Gabby at Mexican Cooking with Gabby. So if you want some authentic Mexican cuisine in your life, check her out. And Tressa at Tressa's Southern Home Cooking. If you are a fan of that good down south home cooking, I'm sure she's gonna have some biscuits and gravy. I'm sure she's gonna have some grits team sweet or team savory, let me know down in the comments. And of course, I will leave all of these people's videos linked down below into one full playlist for everybody. So once you're done with this video, go check them out. And if you're here at my channel from one of their videos, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe subscribe if you like what you see. Before I get cooking, I did want to mention that any tools or recipes that I will be using in my video, I will link down below in the doobly-doo. I think with that being said, let's get to it. I have these two containers of whole wheat flour that I ground myself and they've just been sitting around because I'm lazy. So today we're doing something with it. Now I don't have time to make yeast bread from scratch at the moment, maybe later tonight, but maybe not because I have a mountain bike team coach ride this evening that I'm gonna be doing um, as part of my training. So this evening's like totally wiped. I really only have a couple of hours and I wanted to do some other stuff first. Anyway, enough talking. We're gonna be making whole wheat muffins. So I'm gonna get basically a head start on breakfast tomorrow and maybe the next day. Tripling the batch of muffins because these six kids are just like eating everything in sight. Here's my whole wheat flour, but I'm gonna start, the reason these are so good is because you start like making cookies. So I have three sticks of butter, softened butter in here. I'm gonna put this in my Bosch mixer. I would not try this quantity in a KitchenAid, but if you just wanna do a single batch, which is going to be the recipe I leave below, feel free to use that or a hand mixer would also work. And brown sugar. Now don't be scared, I'm tripling this. Oh yeah, we're talking three cups of sugar. Holy mackerel, these are gonna be delicious. Okay, and now this is empty enough that I can refill this all the way, woo! Ha, ha, ha! Yes, I hate it when I have like a half a bag to refill, but like it doesn't fit. Okay, now it fits. Excellent. Excellent. And I may have poured sugar on the floor, but that's okay. We're just gonna roll with it. Bring these together. Next up we have three eggs. I'll have sugar, I'll have brown sugar all over my shirt. <laughs> and we're gonna use some sour milk, but I don't have any milk. So I'm using water and powdered milk instead. I do need three cups of this, so I'll have to do it twice. But basically, you're just gonna use regular milk and add some lemon juice or vinegar to make it kind of sour, and you're good to go. Ow! <gasps> Why? Okay, what crazy person screwed that on so tight? Ripped my skin off, and my battery's about to die. One and a half tisp of vanilla. That in here. I don't really measure vanilla. If you guys are new around here, I just like to eyeball it because vanilla is delicious. And a little too much vanilla, never hurt anybody. Here we go. Yes. That looks like maybe a couple tablespoons. And mix. Now for all the dry ingredients, we're gonna start adding my whole wheat flour. Six and three quarters cup. I'm gonna start with six and just kind of see how dry it is. 
one, one tablespoon of baking soda, half of that of baking powder, one tablespoon of cinnamon. Now I will mix that and just kind of see the consistency of the muffin. It can lean dry if your whole wheat flour has been like packed down. That looks like a really nice consistency actually. So I don't think I'm gonna add the last half a cup to three quarters of a cup of flour because mine must have been just packed down a little bit. I am baking at 350 degrees for approximately 20 minutes because I'm doing the giant muffin tins. So you guys haven't moved to the giant muffin tins. If you do bulk cooking, like you feeding a large family, you should try it. They're the equivalent of two small ones. And I feel like these are way easier to clean and there's less holes to clean as well. I don't know that I can find these exact ones online, but I'll find some similar and link them. Below. are my whole wheat muffins. I'm gonna scoop these out and put them in a Tupperware and continue to cook the rest of this batter and then my muffins will be finished. We're gonna prep something I'm cooking later because first my oven is busy and second, these need to thaw. So in this <laughs> very, very massive Rubbermaid container, I have a ton of bananas. So here's what happened. <laughs> Sometimes at my local stores, you know the huge cases of bananas, 40 pounds or whatever it is, those will get super, super close to their expiration date, like they're yellow and brown. And so my stores will mark the entire 40 pound box down to $5, but they need to be used within a couple of days. We cut them in half and froze almost all of them. Dave's been using them in his smoothies. I can make banana bread with them, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna do two loaves of banana bread. These are hard as a rock, so I gotta dig some out. I tried to express my concern in the moment. Oh, then it's not bad. Okay, it's not bad. They just kind of like, maybe a knife is a bad idea. A fork. I have better leverage. Oops. I have more force because of the velocity of the angle and where the fulcrum is. Science. Boom. <laughs> so for each loaf of banana bread, I need three full bananas. So these are all cut in half. So there's three. There's one loaf. There's two more bananas. And okay a half of one for good measure. Set these to the side and let them thaw. So when my muffins are done, I can mix up banana bread. And while I'm digging these out, this is actually the current baggie that we use for smoothies. So I think I'm just gonna dig some out and put them in this baggie just so they're easier for Dave because this huge container stays down in our chest freezer like all the time. For those that are wondering about my shirt, I do have roots in Louisiana, who dat? My mom is from there. My grandparents lived there their whole lives. Well, most of their whole lives. My aunts and uncles are there. My cousins are there and I do go often. And I like this shirt because it's black and black is the color of emptiness. I feel it in my soul because I'm an emotional mess. I'm trying to get this huge container out of my freezer because it's one of my favorite Tupperware containers when I make homemade bread and it's full of bananas right now. Okay, I've refilled our smoothie bag and we are done with the bananas for now. I have some peaches and nectarines that my kids are just not eating as fast as I thought they would. So what if we made a peach sorbet? Mm-hmm. Found a recipe online. Oh my gosh, it smells good. So what it's gonna have me do is boil some sugar, lemon juice, and water on the stove to make a simple syrup basically, and some pureed peaches. And then I need to stick it in the fridge to chill. <laughs> and run it through my ice cream maker. So let's get going. Okay, my peaches were a little on the small side. So I probably did, I don't know, eight, eight or nine very, very small ones. Here's my simple syrup. I stuck it in the freezer to uh, cool a little bit. So in we go. We're gonna blend this if I can find the lid. I like this because I love fresh fruit and it has way less sugar than a traditional ice cream. Not that I have a problem with sugar, but there's enough of that in muffins. Blend thoroughly. So that didn't take very long. I'm gonna taste it just to, come on, if I need more peaches or whatever, because the instructions said very, very large peaches and I didn't have that. That is so good. <laughs> this is going to go into just a refrigerated container while it cools all the way. You'll get the best results for your ice cream or sorbets or whatever it is, your batter or mixture is as cold as possible before you put it in the ice cream maker. So we will get to this a little bit later. Okay, yeah, this ended up being very soft serve. Actually, it's not bad. Oh, oh, oh. 
Ooh. Ah. Kind of is it? Peach sorbet. <laughs> That's good. It is, man, there's chunks of peach in there. Well, yeah. I've never had a peach sorbet that actually had like real chunks of peaches. Like real fruit? Yeah, like it's not, it doesn't have the tartness that a normal sorbet has. How about that? Well, peaches aren't supposed to be tart. I've never had anything like that before. Like, in seriously. A, in a good way? Well, it's just never, I've never had a sorbet that has fresh fruit like that. Could call it a peach slush. It's, it's kind of peach slushy. I like that a lot. <laughs> seriously, that looks like the mush they make in the peach. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Can I have more? Why don't you put it in a bowl? Okay. Oh, hey, uh, I was just eating one of the muffins. <laughs> they are so delicious. So this has been on my list to go ahead and get through for a while. So this is frozen cherries. They're fresh pitted cherries that I picked from my neighbor's yard. She never wants her cherries. So I always make like jelly and jam and then I freeze a bunch. I thought these were from 2019. I was wrong. <laughs> they say 2018 on here. Dang it. <laughs> oh no, I just cracked the bag open. Now I definitely have to do stuff with it. One of my favorite things to make with these cherries is cherry pie because these are more of a sour cherry, like the sugar from the pie and a little bit of vanilla ice cream with the tart and sour of these cherries, like way more sour than Bing cherries, is delicious. They are a touch freezer burnt on the top. That is okay, we're gonna make it work. So since I'm doubling this, because go big or go home, my friends, we need 10 cups of cherries, which is not even gonna be enough to take care of this bag. Oh my goodness. That's eight. And then I have enough for like a little cherry crisp. So maybe I'll stick that back in the freezer and we'll work on that. I don't know, we're gonna see how today goes if I can get to this. That was most of that gallon bag. And plus, I like to clear out all my berries in prep for this summer's harvest, which is gonna start in about a month. There's some fruit here in Idaho that grows really, really well and that no one ever wants. <laughs> Plums everywhere, pears, cherries, and apples. And to this, we're gonna add tapioca powder, sugar, and lemon juice. I have muffins stuck in my throat. <laughs> Ooh, boil it until the cherries are like cooked and they start popping and releasing the juice. So this is not a pie that you can use just like frozen berries as is. You do need to cook the cherries because they just take longer to produce like all their pectin and get soupy. People ask me all the time about these storage containers. They're called Lustro Wear. And I don't know the size of this one, but it's very, very big. Uh, these are very old. I, my mom had these when I was a teenager. She doesn't do bulk cooking anymore, so now I have them. Okay, it's a cup and a half of sugar for one batch, and I'm doubling it, so we will go three. And because these are super, super sour, I'm gonna go three heaping cups. Like, these are really sour. The last time I, I made the pie, <laughs> Dave was like, whoa! <laughs> Anyway, about the Lustre Wear, they do have these on Amazon, so I will leave the link these down below, and this is like the biggest one they make, I think. Not much lemon juice, like a tablespoon. I'll measure it just so I don't go crazy. And the tapioca. Here is my tapioca flour, the one that I like to use from Bob's Red Mill. And... I like the tapioca better than a cornstarch or a flour thickener, and I like the flour better than like pearled tapioca, which gives you like chunks in your pie. And I mean, that's no good for anybody. Three tablespoons per, uh, per batch. So we're gonna do six fish. And that's it, we're just gonna put it on the stove and let it boil. No, I gotta close the door. Does it make anybody else cringe when they watch a video and there's like a door open in the background? Blech. So while my cherries are cooking, I'm gonna make the pie crust. You guys haven't made your own pie crust yet. Give this one a shot. It's really, really yummy. And while it is messy, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, it's very cheap to make and tastes so much better than the store-bought crap. Like so much better. I use butter flavored shortening as one of the secrets to this recipe. I have never found success making pie crust with butter ever. I'm doubling this because I'm making two pies. A cup and a half of the butter flavored shortening. 
four cups of flour. One, two, three. <laughs> Ever since I said that in the previous video, I can't like get out of my head. <laughs> I feel like I'm the count on Sesame Street. And one teaspoon of salt for every batch you do. So I need two teaspoons of salt. This is only a, a half a teaspoon measuring spoon because my other one must be dirty. Now you bust out your pastry blender and uh, mush it all together until it is a fine crumbly mess. I know some people that like to do this in their food processor. My mom is one of those, but she uses a different recipe than me. She uses butter for hers and it works well for her, but it has never worked well for me. I don't understand. But this recipe, every time I've given this recipe to someone, they're like, oh my gosh, I can make pie crust now. And if you have uh, someone else hanging out, you can ask them to help you <laughs> in the kitchen and get them to do this for you so you don't have to do it. Which is what I often do with Dave. I give him the bowl and I'm like, here, use your muscles, mash this up. So once you get to this kind of stage, we are gonna add two more ingredients. And the first one, don't be scared, is white vinegar. One teaspoon per batch. The vinegar is gonna act as a tenderizer. And now we're gonna add our cold water. We will start with eight tablespoons because I'm doubling it. Normally I might start with four or five. And because I live in a dry climate, I would use more water than someone that lives in a humid climate, depending on how rainy it is that day or whatever, will change the amount of water that you use. So we're putting in a little bit and we're stirring it and see what it, seeing what it looks like. Flour is temperamental and the weather, really does determine how much you're gonna use. So it's not four tablespoons, it's not seven tablespoons, it's a range. Like it's all about how crumbly it is and how much it sticks together. So we are getting very close at this point. So if I take a bunch and I squish it, does it stay? And it does. So I am there. Now we're gonna roll out our pie crust and remember that this is supposed to be four crusts, two full pies, top and bottom. So we're gonna break it up into four sections. I realize it looks really crumbly right now. It's okay. It is okay. We're gonna mush it all into one ball. I probably could have added one more tablespoon of liquid. I'm just gonna get my hand wet and drizzle that in there. I like this pie crust to be a touch more sticky than not sticky. There, I got two pies, top and bottom. Okay, this is my rolling pin that I like to use. Got it for my wedding, still use it. It's amazing. I'll try and find one online for you. Thin and round as we can. It may not be the prettiest thing ever, but it tastes good. Pie filling now in my crust, so we're gonna put the top crust on and stick these in the oven for about 40 minutes. Now, since the filling is cooked, we're really only cooking the crust here. These are quite a bit lower than the sides of my pie pan, but if you're close, put them on a cookie sheet because you do not want to clean up that spill if this like sugar boils over and then- Okay, poke some holes on the top to let steam escape. 375 degrees, I will see you, nah, we'll check in in 30 minutes or so. Probably it's gonna take 40 though. Yeah, remember that time in that one video where I said don't let it overflow into the bottom of the stove? So we're gonna have to run an oven clean cycle tonight. Here are my pies, and we will eat some after dinner with some ice cream, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be delicious. Now we're gonna move into two lunches and a dinner I had also made in my effort to clean out my fridge and freezer and pantry. Obviously, this one was BLTs. I had a package of bacon in my fridge that had just been there for a while, and I'm like, oh man, I have these like pita bread thingies. I didn't have bread. I haven't, haven't actually had bread in the house for several weeks right now. So the pitas, it was. And then we had some assorted fruits and vegetables as well. Now, I also had these pizza doughs, some pizza sauce, and yes, that is a huge container of Canadian bacon and an entire container of pineapple. Sometimes, guys, sometimes I have friends that give me weird stuff. So <laughs> I had these, I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do with this? I'm making pizza. So we made a Hawaiian pizza and just a cheese pizza, because I knew some of my kids probably wouldn't like the Hawaiian pizza flavor. So tell me right now, are you guys team pineapple on pizza or no anything? But if you guys don't have one of these pizza pans with the holes on the bottom, I highly recommend it. They make the crust so crispy. They're one of my favorite ways to cook pizza in the oven, even more than a pizza stone, honestly. I got the whole wheat ready-made pizza crusts at I think Smith's on clearance or something. I've gotten the whole wheat and then the white. For some reason, this whole wheat is much doughier than the white. It doesn't get as crispy on the outside 
as the white one does. I don't know why that was. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it was because it was old or maybe it was because it was with wheat flour, but I have definitely found more pleasurable results from the white flour one and not the wheat flour one. So I guess uh, your mileage may vary on if you choose to buy one of those. I do know Sam's Club makes a really awesome pre-made case that you can pick up, you know, in the deli section where you buy the pizza slices and the drinks and stuff. If you just ask them for a case of their pizza crust, it's really inexpensive. And if you have a big freezer, you can keep that in. It makes, you know, Friday night pizza night really, really convenient for your kids. My kids adore pizza and sometimes it's almost easier just to make it yourself than it is to go and order it from Pizza Hut or something with all of the rules that they have at picking it up right now. I don't even understand them. So I'm just gonna leave that alone and make my own right now. Here's the completed pizza. It was so good. And I'm pretty sure my whole family ate both of those pizzas, including the side salad that I made. For this meal of gathering up my fragments, I am doing something that I actually have never made in the past previous to uh, one of my extreme grocery budget challenge videos, which is a pasta salad. My kids love this so much. I don't know why I have not made this in the past, but I'm cleaning out my fridge of a couple of veggies that look a little sad. So I had one red bell pepper, a little bit of broccoli, some carrots. It was just one of these bags that was getting a little close to its uh, best buy date. And I have two chicken thighs of smoked chicken. I know they look super dark, but the skin's on them. So I'll just take the skin off. I will chop these up, put them in here. I only have a half a bottle of this ranch. So I'll add this and whatever I have out of this one, just to make it enough and one pound of elbow macaroni. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of elbow macaroni in my house. For some reason, it's the one I don't cook with very often, but it's the one I accumulate the most of. These are weird times. So elbow macaroni noodles, it is. Don't forget to, whoa, steam up your camera lens, salt your water heavily, and get ready to pour in your pasta. Are you ready for the cheer? Are you ready for it? Hey! While this cooks, I'm going to debone that chicken, put it in my bowl, and then it's gonna be lunchtime. I did find this spoon recently on Amazon, so I will link it down below. Hopefully they're still in stock. I think I got the black lung pop. <coughs> Pasta's in, ooh, focus, ooh, hello. Time to add the dressing. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Clean out the fridge, pasta salad. And let me plate it so it looks pretty for you in this bowl. Everybody asks me where I got these, and they are from Pier One, rest in peace. But they were from a while ago. They were actually hand-me-downs for my stepmom who didn't want them anymore, so. <laughs> Five years ago? I don't even know if you can find anything like it anymore. But anyway, let's, let's do this here and make it look pretty. Dun da dun da dun da dun dun da dun dun da Um, do you guys have the same problem I do where you like try and sing the Star Wars theme and it always finishes with the Indiana Jones theme? Just me? Okay, good. Glad to know I'm the only freak. Okay, we are here. It's it it is the next day. We're making the banana bread. No problem, you guys. I just got back really, really late from my bike ride last night, like 9.30, and then I had to eat, and then it's just, it was a whole thing. So here we go. I have one cup of butter, softened butter, and two cups of sugar. Remember, I am doubling this. We'll be making two loaves of banana bread, and you will cream this together like cookies. Two eggs and vanilla. Mix one more time. Four cups of flour, some salt, and baking soda. I've actually made an entire video dedicated to this amazing banana bread that will help you win friends and influence people. So I will leave that video linked down below for you if you'd like to check it out in its entirety. It also includes my mom's famous banana muffins and mix again. After you add your thawed mushy banana juice and mix one more time, put into two greased baking loaves. I like these long skinny ones from Ikea, but they do sell some on Amazon. And don't do that. That's Let's get that off or it's going to become like a burned little nugget that I won't be able to get off ever and bake at a 350 degree oven for one hour. Check out this delicioso banana bread. I'm going to let it cool. Otherwise it might crumble apart, but in 10 minutes, I'm going to take this out of the pans. Oh yes. He tried to get it out of the shot. You guys, that was pretty funny. It was like right here and he's like, Oh, I'll move it out of the shot. Oh, what a good son. Oh, do you guys see that? Right there in the background. Oh, fun video coming up on that baby. Maybe not for a couple weeks, but yeah, fun video. Thank you for watching today's video. I thought I would finish it also with no makeup and my hair not done, just for continuity's sake. That's gonna be the end of this video. And if you guys really, really like this shirt, I actually picked it up at Walmart in the little boys section. This is a size like 16 little boys section for like $8. <laughs> if you wanna go pick one up, I'm sure you can find one. 
but I just like it because I am the captain of my own ship here in my house. So even though it did take me like two days to kind of put together all of these things that I wanted to clear out and make for my family and get these berries out of my freezer, get the bananas out of my freezer, we got it done and I call that a win. I was, <laughs> I was gonna tell you, like if you pick anything from, what is going on with my hair? Like, what is this? <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say, if you guys pick anything to make from this video, pick, and then I was gonna name one thing. And then I realized I had my pie crust, I had my banana bread, I had my whole wheat muffins, I had the yummy pasta salad and BLTs, and now I cannot tell you just one thing because they're all really delicious. Look, I may not have the prettiest white kitchen in the world. I'm not the best cinematographer and I don't know all of the cool editing tricks or whatever and look at me like some days I don't wear makeup but hey my food does taste good I guarantee that okay total side note about like the white kitchen I wish I had a white kitchen truthfully so here's what happened I've contacted like three cabinet shops in my town for a quote on just how much it would cost to get my cabinets professionally painted white like professionally with a clear coat I can wipe off they won't even call me back <laughs> okay, that's how slammed everybody is. I'm kind of going in a different direction. Maybe I'll make a whole video about the kitchen remodel options I am currently thinking about right now, but that's a different story. The last thing I do want to leave you with is once again, I do have all of the recipes and tools I used in this video down below for you, as well as the other five ladies videos that go along with the Gather Your Fragments Friday that we did today. So that whole playlist will be down below as well. And, and, are you ready for this? Hold on to your hats, buckle your seatbelts. Here we go. Before I tell you, hang on. Have you tried this yet? Because if you haven't, you should. It's life changing. Yeah, Dave started his own channel. He sure did. First video he's hoping to have up when this video goes live Friday morning. So if it's live, <laughs> I will link it down below for you. And if it's not, wait a day. <laughs> because he's worked really hard on this first video. It's basically gonna be frugal fit dad perspective doing things as a family, saving money, things like that. So his first video is about mountain biking as a family, some tips and tricks and some fun GoPro footage for you. So if you are interested and wanna go check it out, go check out his channel, Frugal Fit Dad, and subscribe if you like it, hang on. He has been inspired to help out like the dads of the world. Since I help, you know, most of my audience is female, like 90%. If there's dudes out there that wanna know like how to fix a bike and take care of things and do things in your yard and things like that, that's what Dave's gonna handle. Head on over, tell me if you enjoy it. If you like this one, hit the thumbs up button so other people can find it and click on the screen to check out any other videos that I have done in the past, mostly cooking and grocery hauls, uh, will probably be right here. I have a really, really fun video coming for you on Sunday where my whole family tries a bunch of uh, treats from Australia. So check in then, I'll see you next time.